This is Hollywood. Matthias Bombal with you. Sony Pictures Classics offers writer-director Laureen Scafari a story of a widow named Marnie, played by Susan Sarandon, who has moved from New York City to Los Angeles to begin anew. Her daughter, Lori, played by actress Rose Byrne, lives and works in the movie industry in Los Angeles as an assistant director. Marnie is a little domineering, and it is causing a divide between the two women. Mom, maybe you shouldn't drop around here all the time. Then I barely see you anymore. Well, you know, I've got a ton of work to do, so, you know... It requires a lot of research. I'm just saying, I'm not in the position to be very entertaining right now. I don't have any good stories. Is there anything you want to talk about? Didn't you hear what I just said? What I need right now is to write, okay? This is my office. This is my desk. These are my coworkers. If I was in a real office, you wouldn't come in and sit on my desk and pet my coworkers, would you? No. I've been talking to my therapist about this, and I think it's time that we set some boundaries. Sure. I get it. You need to write, and I need to get out of your office. But you don't have to leave right now. No, it's fine, it's fine. I don't want to be crossing anybody's boundaries. Both Sarandon and Byrne in that scene. Laurie goes to New York on a project, and Marnie is unable to involve herself with her daughter's day-to-day activities. She feels the need, however, to mother someone, and Freddy at the tech store is where she sets her sights. I should get one of these for my daughter. Here, why don't you ring me up another iPad? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I decided to take your advice. You're gonna be a lawyer? Well, no, but I am going to school. I mean, it's night school, but maybe engineering or programming or something. See how far I can get. And work's gonna pay for it, so. Oh, Freddy took my advice. (laughs) Yeah, now all I have to do is figure out my work schedule and the bus schedule. You don't have a car? Nah, my mom uses it for work, but it's okay. I don't mind taking a bus. Meet a lot of freaky people on there. No, I could drive you when. Wait, what are you talking about? I'm in the neighborhood. You're always helping me out here all the time. It's been my chance to pay you back. (laughs) Oh my God, do we have to take the freeway? I mean, we could avoid it, but are you sure? I mean, yeah, yeah, it's kind of yeah, late. Yeah. No, no, I don't worry about it. I don't sleep much. Freddy in that scene is played by actor Jared Carmichael. She'll go on to give him rides at times in quite uncomfortable situations, but presses on for someone to love, a way to fill the void left by her late husband. After accidentally walking onto a film set where she is mistaken for an extra, she begins work as a background extra in a film production. It's there that she meets a retired motorcycle cop named Zipper for the first time. She doesn't know what to think of him, but before too long, she becomes interested. Well, uh... I gotta get going. I have to, uh... So I accept my daughter's kids and, you know, my hands are loud. Okay. Uh, do you maybe need a ride? Or... No, I can't drive that. Okay. Uh, how about just this once I drive it and you can sit on the back? <laughs> That's crazy. I would kill my daughter if she died on a motorcycle. Oh, it's in the motorcycle. This is a Harley Davidson world of difference. That's Academy Award winner J.K. Simmons as Zipper. Things begin to warm up between the two in spite of the interloping of Mark, played by actor Michael McKean, who is interested in her. Before you know it, things become foul. Here, let me go in first, make sure we don't let anybody escape. 
Well, now here's, uh, that's Patsy, that's Kathleen. Over here is, uh, that's Isla, Katie and Ruth, that's Gail. And uh, the golden girl there is Henrietta. Now don't let her sass you. She gets a little attitude on account of she's so damn beautiful. So beautiful. Girls, this is Marnie. Hey. I was out here a couple months ago, and I, I brought that boom box with me and playing some tunes. And I looked at their faces, and I swear they just looked happy. So I did a little experiment to try and find out what kind of music they dig the most. Turns out rock and roll makes them legs like crazy, but it, it does stress them out a little bit. Oh, I understand. Classical's good. They like that. Uh, reggae, not good. Really? No. Don't know what it is. Turns out for the, the optimal combination of happiness and productivity, all roads lead to Dolly. Can you tell if it's working? You right door, Don't they look like they're smiling? And wrap my heart. Well, contented at least, which is what I was with this movie. Susan Sarandon is a joy to watch at any time, and here she's excellent. J.K. Simmons is really good too, but I kept thinking that he was channeling actor Sam Elliott in voice and manner, so much so it made me wonder if the part had been intended for Elliott originally. Simmons can do just about anything, but it seemed an odd way for him to imbue this role with his particular talents. Miss Byrne is good with a suffering, depressed role that she plays, but is not among my favorite actresses. This movie may run a little long, or at least seem that way. I kept thinking I was looking at, surely, what must be the last shot, and another would follow. Yet, with these observations, it is Susan Sarandon who captivates your attention from start to finish. This definitely is a movie worth your time. The Motion Picture Association of America has given this a PG-13 rating. This is your pal, Matthias Bombell, bidding you a fond farewell.